Also, our congressman, when he came last time, challenged our business partners. And uh, hopefully he sees some type of improvement on where we're going and what we're trying to do. And again, it's a great honor to give an opportunity to our Congressman Steve Pierce to come up and visit with us about what's happening. And hopefully he can give some encouragement and know that we are collaborating. And we as business partners of Grant County can communicate, can work together for a better cause here in Grant County. So with, with further ado, I'd like to invite our Congressman Steve Pierce. Joe, Alex, Brett, they still around. Give them a round of applause, I'll tell you what. <laughs> you, you can agree or disagree with, with the directions, but the courage of a lion is required to step out in the community and say, uh, we're, we're, we're not satisfied with the status quo. We might not be sure where we're going. Status quo is just Latin for the mess we're in. And so, uh, the, before we get started, when I went to the legislature, I came from Hobbs, a pretty rough and tumble place, oil field, industrial, blue car, and I, I got to the state legislature, and, and I just found a mentor and someone who had a gentler side of life, was, was gracious, was kind, patient. Murray Ryan is in the audience today. I just want to give you a round of And I think they recognize how I am. Uh, but uh, your, your state reps, uh, one of the county commissioners once asked me, why did you run for state uh, representative? You know, the state senate and the state representative, those are volunteer slots. They paid the county commissioners. And so uh, Murray served for decades, and, and Howie, and uh, uh, just uh, Diane Hamilton, you've got good representation. So uh, in a desert, the desert looks to the dew in the morning to create the growth. Unity is like the dew in a barren land. What you're doing here is very important. My message last year, and I, uh, Jeremiah, the uh, round of applause for Jeremiah too. <laughs> My message last year, and uh, for the last several years, if you think Washington is coming to make your place a better place, please get that out of your mind. Washington is not going to come. They're not going to send whatever you need. Santa Fe will send bits because it's a little bit closer. We're going to go through some very difficult times nationwide. <coughs> and every community is going to look within. They're going to have these sessions where they come to resolution. And you either come to resolution or you don't come to resolution. You know, I was reading something uh, just recently and, and things that, that can open your eyes and make you suddenly say, whoa, I had never thought of that. But it was an interview with a guy and he was, uh, seriously aging. A lot of his friends have passed on and they say, of all your friends who've died, of all the friends, who do you miss the most? He said, I miss the person I could have been. Our communities are deciding who they are and who they could be. Now, my daughter went to work in uh, Arkansas. She told me that she did that because she could make three times what she could make in New Mexico. This was 10 or 15 years ago. Now that uh, really shook me up. Our young people will find an opportunity where it lists, where, where it lies. And so I began to work for a better New Mexico at that point. It wasn't even a state representative at that point. Later became a state representative, invited my daughter while I was going to be in the session. My, daughter, my wife and I ran the business every day together. So in my absence, my wife just shouldered the load, and so I asked my daughter to come and spend uh, the month with my wife. And of course, I'd already told my wife, I want you to leave the income statements out on our business. Leave them where she can rummage through them. Because so we had a pretty good little business. It was now going to pay her more than she could make in Arkansas. And so she was there all, week, all month long. She dutifully worked and helped, and so I got home from the state legislature, and I know none of you as parents have ever tried to do this, tried to influence the decision of your children, and so <laughs> I'm just trying to explain how futile it is, but uh, so we had a nice dinner, and Cynthia prepared, and we sat down, and I <clears throat> cleared my throat, and she said, before you ask, the answer is no. <laughs> yeah, she had already figured out that, uh, she said, Hobbs feels like it's dead. It's dying. Your people, your young people here are feeling the same thing. 
Young people on the reservations are feeling the same thing. Every community in America is going to be tasked with the same thing. What's our path forward? I don't know the answers to the questions up here. That's for you all to, to wrestle with. But I will know that if we don't have unity, that we as a nation are going to die. If we as communities don't have unity, then we're going to die. And then we don't have the opportunity to put these great values into our younger generations. So I commend the college, the community, and the, and the county. The first thing I got to, when you're in politics, you're always looking for no's. There are not enough yeses to go around, and so you look for no's, and the easy no's are when you got conflicting opinions in a county. And so my first message to my home county, Lee County, and Hobbs is work together, because I'll give you both no's otherwise. And when I got to Congress, I began to tell the counties, please work together. When you come to Washington, and one makes a presentation that is completely contradicting the other, then the people in Washington, the committee say, no, we can't make a decision out there between those groups. So those are easy no's. So I don't know which way you should go, and I don't intend to influence that. I'll just tell you that, please, please, become the dude that causes this barren area of New Mexico to bloom again in these drought times that we have. Now, I've got a couple of stories that will exemplify that. About 20 years ago, Hobbs was sitting in this exactly the same thing, but we were more technologically advanced. We had these big sticky notes, you know, the great big tab notes. And we had the wall filled with those, the room much smaller than this. We met at the fire department. That was our place to gather. And, and everybody in the audience, much different opinions, had put their own things, and so each list had about 15 things on it. So at least easily 150 things up here on the list. That that's what we want. Some wanted to bring in uh, a pro football team, whatever. I don't remember what it was. Somebody wanted to upgrade the college. Somebody wanted to build a swimming pool. And so we began to go around the list and say, well, what things are within our reach? I will tell you, we, as, and, and the opinions were as widely varied there as they are here, but we began to scratch things off the list in front of ourselves saying, we, we, we can't really go and get Intel to come to Hobbs. They're not going to do that. We don't have any doctors. We don't have any green spaces. We don't have anything here except oil fields. And so at the end of the day, the only thing left on the list that was within our reach right then, trash pickup. We realized that when people drove into the town, they saw an industrial town, and it felt industrial. What doctor wants to come to an industrial town? So the first thing we, I was at the state legislature just at that point, and I got a $50,000 allotment, which tell you how much uh, state reps got compared to state senators. 2.5 million for you all, 50,000 for a state rep. Hobbs used all of that money to burn the abandoned buildings that for decades had needed to go. And then Hobbs opened up the dump 57 tons of garbage came off the streets of Hobbs. You know what then happened? The main street in Hobbs, my whole life, I've lived there since I was about one and a half, and the main street in Hobbs had a zone from about right here to that wall, right beside it, and the houses weren't there. And Hobbs, you know, doesn't grow grass. We don't grow anything. <laughs> it was caliche rock and dirt on the main street. And so how do you think you felt? 50 years I lived that way. After the people began to clean the trash up, then the people told the county commissioners and they told the city, why don't you do something with that caliche rock thing that's been, that is our main street, why don't you do something? And so now then, 15 years later, there's a walkway, it's irrigated, has trees and grass, and Hobbs has a softer field. When Hobbs did that, then the county took the three miles or two miles out to the junior college and put a walking path and I began to be a little bit calmer place, a little bit more sensible place, because we took the steps inside. Now the communities who are sitting and going to wait on Santa Fe to just tell them where to go or to bring the money, grants or whatever, I will tell you, we have things that are going to be in desperate turmoil in the next few years. And I'm not saying that to scare you away from your project. I'm saying that if you do not look within, your community is going to suffer deeply. And if you're not unified on something, you're going to sit here through some of the most trying times our nation has ever seen, 
and you're going to be like the two porcupines that were looking for warmth in the winter. They snuggled up, but they just needled each other all the time. <laughs> My friends, it is time for us to set aside all the differences, cultural, racial, religious, parties. And you hear this from me every day now. We'll run as parties, but please, the day after the election, let's serve as Americans. And I think you can see some of my votes have been very difficult in Washington because I'm not voting as a team member now. Because I'm trying to live the example of what I'm talking about. So come to unify yourselves. When the thing is scratched off, leave it scratched off. And say, okay, I was contending for that, but I'm going to get on board. So I don't know about your projects. That's for you all. But I do know that you can be the do and the in the desert, and that's what we desperately need, this fulfillment, this coming together, this unity. And that's my total message this morning. God bless you as you make it.